If you've looked through my old videos, you probably noticed one from many years ago where I used a Tesla Model S door handle to dispense beer from my kegerator. In my next video, or one of my next videos, I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. But this time, I want to show you how the door handle has changed from a crude design prone to failures into an impressively simple and advanced design. I think this says a lot about where Tesla came from and where it's going. Car publications give Tesla crap for still having problems on the Model S even though it's almost a decade old, but it's not a decade old. I worked for Tesla when those first cars came out. I designed lots of parts, did lots of integration, and spent lots of long nights fixing cars as they came off the brand new assembly line. And those Model S cars are completely different than the ones they are making now. Parts I help design and release don't even look the same. They don't even have the same manufacturing process. While other car companies leave updates for the new model or occasional mid-cycle refreshes, Tesla constantly updates all the parts on their cars. The Tesla Model S is a brand new car inhabiting the body of an old car. And it is much better. Looking back, the old Model S kind of looks like a hand-built kit car because it was kind of a hand-built kit car especially the first few, but the new one looks like it came from an advanced technology company. The advancement in design in some of the components is remarkable. To wit, the Model S presenting door handle. It sits flush with a car when not needed, creating a smooth surface that decreases aerodynamic drag, although I have had more than one aerodynamicist tell me that their effect is negligible because they sit in the wake of the side view mirror, but they do look cool. The early ones had lots of problems with failures. It was a design with a lot of moving parts and a lot of failure points. To be fair, if you would ask me to design this door handle to do this thing, I would have probably designed it pretty much the same way. I am a mechanical engineer, and while I interface with electrons when needed, I prefer to do so with physical buttons and switches. It satisfies my mechanical brain, but other engineers will sometimes call this an unnecessary failure point. The new design has no moving electrical parts and almost no wires. It uses magnetic fields and a relatively new communications protocol called SENT that you're going to start seeing a lot on cars, but more on that later. The door handle is normally flush with the body of the car. When you approach your car with your key in your pocket, the car tells the door handle to present itself. Then you pull the handle and that sends a signal to the electronic latch to release the door. You can also just press on the flush door handle and it will present itself. There's not a lot of space in the door between the handle and the glass, so it's all packaged pretty tight. The handle is on a four bar linkage. This keeps the handle mostly parallel to the outside of the car, though it does move in a bit of an arc, which is why it's shaped like this. Now to actually move the door handle, a gear motor is used. This thing is geared way down with planetary gears, so it spins super slow. The gear rotates a little arm that pushes against the linkage, which moves the handle out. The gear doesn't directly move on the handle. The gear-driven arm and the linkage are separate. Why is this? Well, if a high-torque gear motor were to move the linkage itself, it would crush your fingers. The handle actually returns home with the force of a spring, so you can stick your fingers in there and it won't chop your digits off. But how does the door handle know when it's all the way out, or all the way in? Well, this is the part of the design that's not so great. There are two micro switches, one that clicks on whenever the handle is stowed, and one that clicks on whenever it's deployed. There are also two pressure switches, one that is activated when you press the handle, and one that's activated when you pull on the handle. One big problem is that these micro switches are not super robust. The door mechanism is not on the dry side of the door, it's exposed to the elements, the dust, and the rain. These switches are rated for way more cycles than a door handle will ever see, but the automotive environment is exceptionally harsh. Sometimes the switches break, sometimes the wires fatigue and break, sometimes the pressure door sensor stops working, so on some cars the door handle will present, but it won't open the door. The lever that that gear motor is attached to also had some problems. The early ones would break such that the motor would not move the door handle. So two micro switches, one pressure switch, one pressure sensor, nine wires, lots of failure points, and none of this is redundant. There's no alternate way to open the door except to open your passenger door and reach across your $85,000 luxury car to open the driver door. There are so many problems with the early door handles that multiple people have designed fixes and set up web shops where you can buy replacement parts. There were a few small iterations of the door handle after this first design. They removed that pressure switch and replaced it with another micro switch. Then they later added some reinforcing wires that go to the moving switches so they're less likely to fatigue. Somewhere along the way, they also replaced the gear motor lever with a stronger design. But after a few years, with more engineers, more money, and suppliers that would actually answer the phone, they came up with a much better design. The new design retains the same four bar linkage, the same handle, the same gear motor, and the same spring. It actually just uses all the old designs for those. There used to be a pressure sensor right here, but this is just a dummy plastic part to keep all the geometry the same. 
What's gone are those four sensors, the two micro switches and the two pressure sensors, and all the wires that go to those. This handle has only four wires, two for the motor and two for the LED light that illuminates the ground when you walk up to the car. So how does this handle know where it is? This handle has a magnet that sweeps by this sensor. Now I know that this is a magnet because there is a constant supply of metal shavings floating around my garage, and so anything with magnets gets real obvious. Like Apple uses lots of magnets. But how does this sensor work? Is it a magneto-resistive sensor? Is it a Hall effect sensor? Is a Hall effect sensor a type of magneto-resistive sensor? Is it pronounced magneto-resistive? I don't know. I am a simple mechanical engineer. I don't deal with invisible fields because if I can't see them, they must not be there. There are six wires going into this control board, and as I said before, there are four wires inside, two for the motor, two for the LED puddle light. Using a multimeter, I determine that two of the wires go straight through to the motor and two go straight through to the LED light. There's also some resistance between the two middle wires and one of the LED wires, so I prodded. I checked the resistance while moving the handle to see if any of the wires changed, but no. I put 5 volts into the LED to see if maybe that was powering the sensor, then move the handle and check the resistance on all the wires, but no. I threw 5 volts randomly at each of the two middle wires and checked to see if the other one changed with movement, and there was some weird measurements, but nothing consistent. The function of this sensor is beyond my simple understanding of electrical engineering. There is only one way to figure out how this sensor works, and that is to take it apart. Unfortunately, it is potted, which means after they made the circuit board, they covered it in black goo just so that I couldn't easily take it apart. How rude. But I will find out what electronics are inside here because I have careful hands and I have patience. Peeling apart the plastic and the goo near the top of the sensor, I came across a small integrated electrical looking thing with numbers on it. A part number, perhaps? Let's check the googs. Of course, it's a KMA215 programmable angle sensor with SAE J2716 SENT. Why didn't I think of that? Well, I didn't think of that because I have no idea what any of that means. Fortunately, there is a product data sheet. I'll spare you the boring details and get to the cool part of this sensor. It's a magnetic sensor that will tell you the angle of a magnetic field. So you swing a magnet by it and it will tell you what angle the magnet is at. And if that magnet is attached to a door handle, you know how far opened or closed your door handle is. This is a high precision sensor, so when you press on the door handle to make it open, it measures a small movement of the handle, so your car knows that you're pressing on the handle and want it to present. After it has presented and you pull the handle, that sensor reads a small deflection in the handle from you pulling on it. Boom! Four crappy, failure-prone sensors gone, replaced by one solid-state, non-moving sensor sealed up in a watertight container that can only be opened with the delicate touch of a mechanical engineer. <laughs> But here's the really interesting part. You remember how I couldn't get any changing voltages or resistances out of those wires? That's because this sensor communicates digitally using a one-way high-speed protocol called SENT. This is a Society of Automotive Engineers protocol, and it's used by a lot of car companies on new cars for things like throttle position sensors and airflow sensors. If you don't know what this is and you work on cars, listen up, because this is going to be important in the near future. It's a super simple way to communicate. It uses one wire in one direction. The sensor sends 0 volts or 5 volts down the wire, alternating between the two. The computer on the other end measures the time between the spike from 0 to 5 volts and the next spike from 0 to 5 volts. The number of microseconds between those two spikes tells the computer what angle the sensor is at. It's a little more complicated than that because it sends multiple bits of data and calibration pulses and error checksums, but it's essentially just sending a constant stream of digital data. And whenever the body controller wants to know where the door handle is, it just looks at the time between the 0 to 5 volt spikes and it knows what's going on. I hooked up my oscilloscope to the door handle and measured the signal, and it did change with the moving door handle. I tried to write some code on an Arduino to read the signals, but the Arduino is just not fast enough. The signals are sent in microseconds. I did find some code online that allowed me to use a Raspberry Pi to read the output. It just spit out a four-digit number that changed linearly with the moving door handle, and you could tell it was sensitive enough to see the pulling or pushing of the handle. This whole new door handle is an awesome design. I could only think of one problem with it. The sensor measures the movement of the handle, not the lever that the motor is attached to. The original design had the return sensor attached to the motor lever. Remember how the handle and lever are not connected so you can't cut your fingers off? Well, if you hold the door handle out and the door decides to retract the handle, it can't because it won't know when to stop retracting. The controller knows the handle is deployed because it did the deploying, but what if you turn the power to the car off and then pulled the door handle out and then turn the power back on? The sensor would read the door handle is deployed. Would it break itself trying to motor the lever back farther than it can go? It's possible that the door controller keeps a hard code knowledge of its motor position and turning off the power won't fool it, or maybe it waits until you're driving and assumes someone hasn't shoved a stick in the door handle in an obvious attempt to try to break the control system. 
Did you think of this in the DFMEA meetings, Tesla? Did you? By the way, DFMEA meetings are the worst. You just sit there coming up with all the possible ways a user could break your system, and you never think of everything, because out of 8 million people, there will always be a few that manage to be more idiotic than six engineers ever thought possible. Sometimes when I see a really complicated product, I think about how thankful I am that I was never required to go to DFMEA meetings about that product. This new design drastically reduces failures by reducing the moving parts and combining four discrete sensors into one non-moving solid-state sensor. And it uses a communications protocol that makes the whole thing much less expensive. This is awesome. Tesla designs and builds some really awesome stuff, eventually. And you might be tempted to buy one. But first, ask yourself, has Tesla made 10,000 of these yet? And if the answer is no, you might want to wait a few months. Listen, if you don't hit that like button and subscribe, then I'm going to have to get a job and then I'm going to have to go to DFMEA meetings. Don't do that to me.